Hey there, Groovesters, Groove Stars, Ridgely here, and I am super excited to have reconnected with an old friend where we shared the stage together as professional speakers many eons ago before he became a monster business maven out there in the world, building 11 different companies, eight of the four of them to eight figures, but eight figures, do that. That's seven figures is a million, eight is over 10, just saying. This is not a common thing that most people can do, but I am super excited to get into a conversation about entrepreneurship, success principles, et cetera, with my friend that we reconnect with, Chris Guerrero. Chris, thanks so much for taking the time, brother. Really appreciate it. Oh, man, I'm so excited. I'm, I'm looking forward to having a little bit of fun, Richard. You know, I actually know a little bit of your story, but most people don't. Now you have these businesses, a bunch of them. You coach a ton of very, very successful people at the highest possible levels. But it wasn't always like this. There was a day way back when. Give us a little bit of the of the story of how you became the entrepreneur that you are today, starting from early on, before, wow. before the monster success. Uh, so I started as a personal fitness trainer. And... Um... And, and it was it was fun, and I did a lot of uh, you, know, you know I had a lot of really fun clients, and I actually started that when I was in uh, college. Um, and I remember designing my first business card, sitting in a nutrition class, like literally sitting in the back of class, designing my first business card, and what I was going to write in a brochure because back then we still have brochures. In fact, I have my first brochure on one of my shelves here. Uh, in front of me. <laughs> That's so, great. I love that. But uh, yeah, and I grew that um, to a you know good sized business where we had almost 150 personal trainers working for me. Not working for me; they were independent contractors, which is you know uh, uh, your first big lesson in business uh, when you work with a bunch of independent contractors. That uh, you know there's it's like a wild west; they could pretty much take your clients, and that's exactly what happened. Um, but but while I was still doing well, I had a client that said, hey, what would you think about opening up a health club? And I'm like, I would I would love that. Um, not my exact words. They were a little bit more, you know, I'll, I'll keep this relatively PG with you. But I, I can imagine. I was, yeah. So I was I was excited about that. So we partnered on my very first health club, opened that up in New Jersey. And um, and, and within the first year and a half or so we grew at a staggering rate. But when I say grow, I mean, our revenue grew and our expenses grew. I knew nothing about business and I learned literally in business. So I would go out there and I would figure out ways to get more people in, but it cost me so much money. And, and I literally worked for years and didn't have hardly, I didn't have enough money to move out of my parents' house. I didn't have enough money to put you know, to, to buy my own food and gas. I was doing that on credit cards and then trying to run promotions in the club to pay back my credit cards. And um, anyway, I ended up buying my partner out because he, because in order to really get to the next level, I thought we need more locations, which was the truth in that industry. That's exactly how you grow, but he didn't want the risk. So I bought him out, <clears throat> grew that into a chain of health clubs up and down the East coast. Um, and really the first decade was struggling. It was um, living credit card to credit card. Um, in fact, I almost got shut down one time because I didn't have enough money to pay payroll. So I didn't know this was against the rules, but I woke up sweating one morning, uh, got to the office early and took out my stack of personal credit cards and went into the reception desk and started swiping every one of my credit cards. I think I got three or four credit cards in before the terminal stopped working. Um, got a phone call from the merchant saying there's some suspicious activity. Apparently, I'm using, you know, I'm running my own personal credit cards and trying to pull out 10 and 15 and 20,000 when they were used to like $45 <laughs> transactions. Um, and I explained to them what was happening. They were going to shut me down. And I, and, and after literally crying on the phone with them, um, they, uh, the guy said, okay, well, listen, I'm going to, I'm going to fax you back then. They, fa uh, you know, if anybody realizes, remembers what a fax is, they faxed me a form to sign stating I would never do this again. Uh, and they let me keep it open because otherwise I wouldn't be able to make payroll that day. Um, anyway, uh, fast forward, I, I, I learned a lot about business, did 
some really wonderfully creative things to become highly profitable in that industry. Sold that company for more money than I had ever seen a chain of health club sell for at the time. This was back in 2004. Um, and ever since then, now I have, um, I, I got into a venture capital firm, which I'm still uh, a, you know, a major partner in. I've, I, I'm in the legal industry. We have um, um, companies in uh, publishing and real estate in a variety of different industries. Again, we've got 11 companies inside the portfolio. Um, and I spend the great majority of my time actually Monday and Tuesday, and then Thursday and Friday, uh, I spend inside of my businesses. Uh, you know, Emily, who's been my assistant now for 19 or so years, gives me my numbers, my top metrics for each one of my companies. And I look at them for about 30 minutes. And then I'm in my leadership team meetings because I personally run each one of the leadership team meetings inside of my companies. And I'm in there from 9.30 to 12.30. And that's they're usually 10 minutes long or 15 minutes long. And we bang through each one of the leadership team meetings. And then from 12.30 to 3 o'clock, I do whatever I'm good at inside of that company. And I'm, and I'm pushing all the companies forward. And then at 3 o'clock, I'm done. And that's every day of the week except for Wednesday. Wednesday is the day that I have Club 28, which is our advisory program, where I personally work with a small handful of other uh, businesses and help them to scale. So I'm extremely, I consider myself living my personal dream because I get a chance to build my own businesses. Um, in the venture capital field, I get a chance to invest in some amazingly great businesses and own a, a big portion of those companies as they grow them. And then in the advisory program, I get a chance to get paid a small amount of money and, and, and mentor folks to grow their companies. So we get a chance to impact the lives of a lot of people. And I'm just, you know, blown away that I'm able to do this. Well, that's fantastic. Now, now talk to, take us back to kind of based on your journey, what would you say are the two most important or top characteristics of a successful entrepreneur? And what can someone do to grow those? Well, so first of all, um, you can't do it alone. Like I think that the, like the characteristic of understanding that you need to surround yourself with really great people. So, so understanding you can't do it alone, but not surrounding yourself with asses, not surrounding yourself with stupid people who all want to give you advice because everybody has what they think is great advice. Being extremely selective in the few people that you surround yourself with and, and, um, and, and then learning from them, like being open to learn from them. I, people make fun of me all the time because, the, you know, we, I talk to people all the time and they say, oh, I've got so many friends. I've got hundreds of friends where I've got... And then you must have a lot of friends too, Chris. I said, oh, I'm like, well, I got eight. I have eight friends. And, uh, but these are, these, are, these are people who would go to war for me. They're people I've known for a long time and I'd go to war for them. And, and, they, and I know everything about them and their families and everything. And they know everything about me. And these are people that I very selectively brought into my life. And it's, it's taken a very long time. It's not like I just found them. So, so I think... Um, Understanding that you can't do it alone is number one. The second thing would be uh, knowing that there's really only a few key actions that drive the growth in any single company. So un developing that characteristic inside of yourself where you're constantly studying and studying your business, not studying, you know, just general stuff, but studying your business, your customers, your industry, and knowing the few levers that you always need to be pulling in order to keep growth happening. I think uh, that's probably, in my opinion, the two most important things. So what can somebody do uh, based on that first one to find those great friends, those great, uh, intelligent, high-level people who can help you move forward? So... You mentioned something before we even started recording was, which was um, an organization that you and I have both been part of, YPO and and also EO. Um, I, 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 two of the people who s sit on my board came from YPO, um, and um, and 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 I believe that those organizations are full of really brilliant people. There's also you know people who are not brilliant in there. 
but that that's part of the selection process. Like you really have to be very good at understanding people. And the only way to do that is to really talk to a lot of people. Um, so I think that knowing where to go to hang out with good people mm-hmm. and knowing where to go to not hang out, like where, where, like you don't want to waste your time. You and I, and everybody who's listening to this, like we've only got the same amount of time every single day. We've only got 24 hours in a day. Most of us try to sleep part of that. Uh, yeah. Most of us try to stay healthy. Most of us try to have relationships in our lives with our family and friends. So there's a small amount of time that we have to make our mark in business. And in order to make the biggest mark in business, you absolutely need really great people. So your selection process needs to be on fire. And often selecting great people is more of an exercise of knowing who not to let in than who to let in. Mm-hmm. And, and and what would you recommend to people that are out there to build that radar of who not to let in? As you said earlier, only a few key actions drive things. So it's, almost, it's a largely a matter of saying no to most things. So you can say yes to those things that are important, kind of the Pareto principle. Right. So, you, so who's important to me is going to be different than who's important to you is then is going to be different than who's important to Bill or Bob or Jane or Mary. And the reason is, is because we all um, want and want to get to a different point in our lives. So I'm a big believer in reverse engineering everything in my life. So uh, before I figure out what the best actions are for me to take today, I need to look at what do I need? Where do I need to be next year or in 10 years or, you know, down the future? So I need to understand where I need to be. And in order to get there, what kind of a person do I need to be now? Um, and then I build my team, my, my, my network around the people that I need to influence me. I have a friend who uses the term, like he says, Chris, I let very few people speak into my life and I want you to always speak into my life. And that's not the same term that I use, but it, you know, I, I use the word influence. I believe no matter who you have in your life, they are influencing you. Your kids are influencing you. Your, your spouse is influencing you. Your friends are influencing you. Uh, the, 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 if you watch television, which you know, not that many people do these days, but if you watch television, that influences you. So you choose whatever goes into your mind very, very, very wisely. Um, so anyway, I'm, I think I'm getting off path, but. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I think it, it's uh, the, you mentioned YPO, EO, basically peer-to-peer masterminds, if you will, or peer-to-peer groups, et cetera. Now, how important has that been in your journey to find the right associations to belong to and be a part of? They're huge. Um, they're huge, but you know, I'm a loner. Like I'm, I left my own devices. I would stay in my little cave and uh, not allow anybody in except for my kids. And, um, and, and I would be very, very happy and content, but I would be very stagnant in my life. So I, so I have to make an effort to, to get my butt out and actually, you know, hang out with people. Um, so it, so understanding when I am going to do that, which places I'm going to go and actually invest my time is really important. YPO is big. EO also, I found that uh, in the uh, state um, that I'm in, what uh, EO was more valuable to me than YPO, although YPO normally has larger businesses in it. But they have presidents of Johnson and Johnson and AT and T, and they have presidents who have never built a company before. Right? EO had uh, has a, has people who are in the grind every single day. So, uh, and, and at all levels, like I had a guy uh, when I was uh, I'm not in EO any longer. When I was in there, I had a guy who had an 800 plus million dollar a year company in my forum group. Mm-hmm. Like it's like there's a, a staggering difference in sizes. And that brings a lot of really wonderful ideas to the table. But there's a lot of organizations like that. Um, what I what I really believe somebody shouldn't do is just go to industry um, seminars. Like you and I um, have many friends who are like, we know most of the seminars in, in the internet, <laughs> right? Yes. And, and it's a bunch of fluff. And there's, a, I mean, I could name two off the top of my head. Out of all of them that I know, many of them are run by my friends, um, but I don't go to them. 
And, and, and even the few that I have been to in the past, not as I, I've, I, I haven't been to an internet seminar ever in my entire life as an attendee, only as a speaker. So um, uh, the ones that I, the, the seminars that I used to go to as a uh, attendee were personal development seminars like Bob Proctor and folks like that who were um, friends and mentors of mine back in, in the day. So let's talk about that for a second. Let's talk about the value of personal development. What what do you say? You, you're obviously coaching a lot of people. Uh, you, you're working with a lot of leaders of enterprise. What do you say to them? And what has been your experience of the value of personal development? So uh, in my opinion, personal development helps you figure out what your target is. That I don't think you could do anything in life without a target. And, and personal development often... It, at least for me, helped me to get very, very clear on my target, what I wanted to do and give you the, mod, not motivation, but the kick in the ass, knowing that you can do it. Um, you know, going back to like you and I have many of the same mentors way, 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 way back, our, our original mentors in the personal development field. And that was way before um, people were sold from stage. So they literally were getting up there and genuinely wanted to help. They genuinely wanted to teach you what was helping them and what they saw helping everybody else. There was no sales pitch. There was nothing. I mean, in fact, I remember the very first time that Bob said something to me after an event and he said, do you realize people will buy if you tell them to buy when you're on stage? He goes, it's like, we just made so much money here. And I, I didn't, all I did was I told them, get into one of my programs. And it was such a, it was like, it was like he, it was brand new. Now it's reversed. Like everybody designs these things just to sell, which is, uh, which is sad. Um, but I tell people that personal development, whether it's personal or professional development, has to do more with figuring out where you want to go and what your path should be. And then you need to knuckle down, put your put your blinders on, your head down, and charge forward and implement like there's no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's so funny because I I just uh, I to this day listen to Jim Rohn, and I never get tired of it. Even yeah. though I can almost quote what he's about to say, I'm like I still listen to Jim Rohn. <laughs> I just love that guy. Um, so tell me, just switch it up for a second. Think of maybe you can give us one big setback or screw up or something that happened that comes to mind and what you took away from that. Um, so I'll tell you, I mean, I think I, I probably had, I mean, I've had probably a million and a half screw ups. Uh, <laughs> my, I think my largest one is the root of all of them. And that is, um, not asking for help. My, my, um, it's just not natural for me to ask for help. And, and I, and I always felt when I was getting started that, well, you know what, as I want to make my first million, it'll be easier for me to ask for help because I'll feel like I'm a peer or when I, when I get to this level or when I get to the next level or whatever it is, it'll be easier. And it actually gets significantly harder. Um, and at this level now, I still fight it on a regular basis because now I feel often that, and this is weird. I've never actually talked about this before, but I, I feel very strange that at this level um, I shouldn't need to ask for help or it's almost embarrassing to stop and say, um, I don't know that. Would you, you know, teach me that, help me with that. Um, so it's, it's internal. Like I truly believe that's a problem. And I fight with that on a regular basis. So that's definitely been one of the big thorns in my my paw. Yeah. So let's talk about that for a second, because clearly being in EO, I was in 20 years, not anymore, but you know, 20 years is a long time to be in EO. Yeah. Um for me, mentorship was always key. I was like, I'm all, I'm looking for a mentor if it's to go to the gym, obviously I don't have guns as big as yours, but they're still all right, you know. Um, or it's a writing mentor or a speaking mentor. I mean, I sought out Les Brown when I first started speaking, so I could hang out with that guy. What does mentorship mean to you? And I mean, obviously you're mentoring a lot of people. 
even if you're wrestling with finding mentors for yourself. So what does mentorship mean to me? Yeah. And what's the value of that for the people that are watching and listening to this, seeking mentors, trying to find those people in addition to the friends, mm -hmm. mentors that have walked the walk that, that you're trying to do and, and can help you out. So I'll, I'll, I, I, I'm going to, I'm going to answer you, but I, I want to say something that I think is slightly different than what you're asking. Um, but I think it's important. At least it's, it was very, very important to me. And it's, it's that, Mentorship is so important, but it's equally important to have mentors across the board in every area of your life than just the one or two areas that you want to grow. And the reason why I say that is because we've all got a lot of areas in our life. And, and I promise you, you drop the ball in one of those areas and everything else goes to shit. You build your freaking company because you got great mentors around you driving the hell out of that growth every single day. And you go from from whatever you're at, zero to six to seven to eight to nine plus figures, and you think you're doing fucking great, yet your health is destroyed, your relationships are destroyed. You, like, um, I believe that you need relationship mentors. I believe you need health mentors on a regular basis. I've got mentors. Some of my favorite mentors right now are, are these dudes that I just brainstorm with about cognitive development, like getting my brain to function as, as good as possible. And the reason for that is because when your brain functions so well, Everything else in life is just easier. It's easier to make split second decisions in business and to have time with your kids because when you're talking to them, you're present with them because you're actually focused on them instead of because your brain has enough energy to have taken care of everything in business. So I, I think that it's important to not just have really good mentors, like really, like we were talking about before, surround yourself with good people, selective with your mentors, finding just the best of the best for one thing pull, figure out what le one lever you want to pull with business, get mentors there. And then, and then get one for your relationships, get one for your health, get one for each area of your life. Um, I also believe that you should not have, and I, and I'm sorry, if you disagree with this, you shouldn't have multiple mentors in the same area at the same time. You should outgrow your mentors. So have one outgrow them because if you have two people saying two slightly different things, then what you have is a massive disconnect inside your head. You don't know whose ideas to, to take and to, to build off of. So I have, uh, and there's a lot of different levels to this. Like I have um, one of the greatest decisions that I ever made in my business life was to put together a board of directors. And I did this many, many years ago. And they're not mentors of mine though. They are advisors to my growth inside of my company. So when I go to them, they they help me to make I, I throw ideas out there we destroy them and we rip them apart and then we rebuild them during that meeting so that I have a plan forward for the for the next 30 or so days. Um, that's huge different than a mentor. like a mentor is totally different. The mentor would tell you you need a board. Let me show you how I've developed the board. A mentor is somebody who has done what you want to do um, over and over and over again. I don't choose mentors who have done it once. I never choose a mentor who's done it twice. Once is luck, twice, okay. But when you've done the same thing over and over and over again in your life, you've built multiple, like, like you've built multiple seven-figure companies if that's, what you, if, you're, if that's what your goal is. Get a mentor who's built multiple seven-figure. If you want to go to eight, get a mentor who's built multiple eight-figure companies. If you want to have a, a great body, figure out, who's built that uh, the body that you want and maintained it for many, many years and helped other people do it because they have a duplicatable process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. And I don't disagree with you at all. In fact, I think one of the big challenges that a lot of people starting out in business, particularly in the online space where the barrier to entry is relatively low, it's right. not a huge financial risk, et cetera. One of the biggest mistakes people make is mentor shopping. In other words, there's a shiny penny over here. Oh, I'm going to follow this system. Oh, I'm going to follow this person. Oh, I'm going to follow that person. And they get so confused about what they're supposed to be doing. So I am 100% with you on this. Yep. Stay stay in, find the person that's in that lane that you want to be and stick with that person until they're not serving you anymore. Or like you say, you outgrow that person. Yep. Huge. I, I absolutely agree with that. Totally 100%. So Back to uh, 
the uh, the concept of professional development. If you had three resources, personal development, professional development, three resources that you would recommend for budding entrepreneurs that they need to really tap into, could be books, could be whatever you want. What would three resources be that you'd recommend? Hmm. So um, my first would definitely not be books. Um, uh, I'm a I'm a big believer that um, books are designed to give you ideas, not solutions. Uh, and and many of them are wonderful, but um, I I can I meet people all the time who have read thousands and thousands of books and are stuck and not happy. Mm -hmm. And that sucks. And I feel bad. And, they, and they're constantly asking me, well, what book would you recommend? Um, I recommend people. Like I would much rather somebody spend the time to find a person that can help them get to the next level. Um, so, and, and by the way, that's very, very difficult. So if I was looking at resources like you're asking me to do, honestly, um, YouTube and, and um, Spotify or podcasts are probably one of the best resources that you and I didn't have when we were just getting started. But they're such a great process to be able to vet people. Like we could listen and actually hear consistent messages. If you go to somebody's YouTube channel, like if you go to my YouTube channel, you're going to hear the same thing over and over again. Not the same content, but the same values and 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 i'm constantly helping you know dropping uh, content on moving to the next level there's very little in there that i would ever go out there it, it, there's nothing on my channels that um are talking about anything other than moving forward personally and professionally period the end um but there's a lot of people who are just like well but look at my car and look at this and look at these other things like you will, once you go start going through some podcasts and you start listening to people, you'll pick up consistent messages and you'll find, well, I like this one guy or this one woman because she seems to be very good in the way she crafts sales copy for this particular product to this particular audience. But I'm not going to listen to her advice when it comes to crafting sales copy for a different kind of product or for a different kind of audience because she doesn't talk about that stuff, right? So you get very good at being able to vet people by listening to their content. Um, it takes a lot of time, but if you're starting out with very little money, that's probably the number one resource. Yeah, try to find those people, really vet them. And that's interesting that uh, find that consistency in the messaging through listening to them and see if they, if they do have a consistent message because a lot of people just don't. But you're yeah. kind of all over the place. Very very few people do because they're jumping around there. What they're trying to do is they're trying to hack an algorithm or they're trying to find out what content becomes viral as opposed to like um, social media is a way to serve. Just like your companies are a way to serve. Um, and, uh, and, and, and if you're trying to hack something on a regular basis, then you stop serving the, your audience and you start serving yourself, which becomes very, very evident when you're listening to people consistently. Talk to us a little bit about AI, the role of AI in the growth of your businesses, what you think the future of AI looks like for budding entrepreneurs out there, and your take on how important is it to, on some level, get involved or pay attention to it? Yeah, so AI, um, it, it's very difficult to have a good stance on AI these days because um, depending on your industry, depending on your business, depending on your position inside your company is going to dictate whether or not AI is going to be important for you. In my companies, I have found that AI is vital to um, far more than half of the companies inside of my portfolio. However, my involvement with AI is minimal. And, um, and, and certainly I went down the rabbit hole. I think it was a, almost two weeks where I was just like, oh my God, like this is just so much fun and there's so many possibilities here. And then very quickly, I saw that things began to stagnate. My team meetings started to go downhill. Um, my desire to show up for meetings went downhill. Um, everybody's motivation started to go down because I they were not able to plug into me uh, inside of our companies. So 
we ended up going out there and hiring an AI manager in each one of our companies. So out of the out of the eleven companies in the portfolio, ten of them have uh, AI managers inside of there. One of them has multiple AI managers in there because there's so much AI that we have are processing. So I think it's vital. Probably it's going to be vital for every company at some level. Uh, certain businesses is going to be far more important for us. I think it's just going to be a tool, you know. And by the way. We, we use it for a lot of things that most people don't use it for. We use it not just for uh, helping us craft content and, um, and, and, and sales letters and things like that. But we also, um, each one of the people inside of our companies has a requirement that they have to spend um, about 10 minutes or so a day. What we do is we have a, a memo that goes out with four questions every morning. And those four questions are different every single day. and um, and they go to everybody in the company and those people are responsible for asking AI those questions and becoming better and better at crafting a better version of the questions that we give them to get the best answer because that makes them a better communicator with people. And your development in business in any capacity is really limited by your ability to communicate. So we're using AI as a tool to help people become better leaders. Love that. Love that. So the, here's a question for you. Imagine that you had a time warp and you could hit a button and go back 20 years and speak to the young Chris Guerrero 20 years ago with all the experience and the knowledge that you have today. What would you say to young Chris? Um, I would say understand that whatever you end up doing for a living, whether it's working for somebody else or building something of your own, um, that it is just a tool to get you the life that you want. So, so it's important to make it a study about what industry you want to get into, what kind of work you want to do, what kind of money you want to make. And then it's important to make it a study about, um, how to not just make that money, you'll know, you grow revenue, but also grow profit. And then it's important to make it a study about how to pull a, a great majority of that profit into personal assets. And then it's important to make it a study to allocate that property so that it grows properly. And then it's important to make it a study to protect that so that you're building um, not a, a retirement and a future for yourself only, but you're building um, wealth for yourself, your your spouse, your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids. Because it, it it I have found more joy in building things that affect future generations than I have ever found building things because I thought it was fun for right now. Fantastic. All right. Wrapping up here. Last words from Chris Guerrero based on all that you've learned and the journey. What's your vision for the future? What would you want to say to all the entrepreneurs that are out there uh, listening right now about being an entrepreneur as you have become so adept at? Well, I would say um may, I'm just going to go back to something that I recently that I just said, make it a study. Um, whatever you want to do, make it a study, but figure out what you want, figure out where you want to be, reverse engineer that, and then make every step on that path a study. And when it's a study, it's it's a study by learning from other people. It's a study from absorbing whatever you can in your downtime. And, and it's a study on how to become more productive so that when you're working, you're working your freaking ass off in the right way doing just a few key actions that actually move the needle for you. Chris, thank you so much. Free report team, you know what to do. Hit the button below, go get that. Read some more of what Chris has to say and offer to the world. I know many people, very few people have a chance to actually work with you directly, Chris, but the, the reports are pretty stunning and staggering. And I just wanna say thank you very much on behalf of our community for joining me today and sharing a little bit of your journey, which has been quite remarkable. Thank you, brother. Thanks you very much. Thanks, Richard.